Welcome to Capital Preview. I'm Bill Peard, the Executive Vice President of the Iowa Cable and Telecommunications Association, and I'll be your host today. Today is our inaugural show, the first of many more to come. Every Monday, we'll invite two state legislators to our studios to discuss the important issues they're working on in the Iowa General Assembly. This program will air on three different occasions every week, and then we'll have two more legislators each week following. We will follow the same format in each of those shows. I hope you'll find this program helpful in educating you on key issues that face our state. This public information show is sponsored by Mediacom as a public service to Iowans across the state. So I'd like to welcome uh, Representative Peter County here from West Des Moines. Peter, good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me, Bill. Um, Representative County, I think the first thing that I'd like to ask you about, because it seems to be the talk of Iowa, is our broadband um, yeah. bill that the governor's proposing to connect every acre. Um, so do you want to kind of go through that a little bit? Sure. And, uh, it is. It's a big issue this year. Um, this, was a, this has been an issue that's been, I'd say, percolating for now two sessions, two different general assemblies. Um, the governor has proposed uh, a bill called Connect Every Acre. And what the, the problem that this addresses is broadband or internet uh, connectivity throughout the state. Not everyone and not every community has good access to, these, uh, to the internet. So it really it touches on any number of different uh, segments in our state, you know, healthcare, mm -hmm. telemedicine, uh, for rural Iowa, that is, uh, that's become quite a big issue. And if they don't have connectivity, uh, they cannot perform telemedicine. Mm -hmm. uh, education, a lot of uh, a lot of kids are being educated in schools with uh, the internet as a tool. So when they go home, if they don't have uh, connect connectivity to the internet, you know, might they be uh, uh, not on equal footing with others who do? Mm -hmm. As well as, I would say. Uh, just the economy and a quality of life issue as well. Uh, the internet's become a way of life um, for so many people and so many th different ways we do things in our world. Um, so it really is, a, that's an issue that we're working on right now. It's not an easy one. Everyone agrees that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we get something on paper, uh, that's when we start to have some disagreements. So we are at that stage right now. The governor has proposed a bill called Connect Every Acre, uh, which again, which is one more step to that. It's uh, aimed to work with even further in the agricultural sector, uh, increase productivity on our farms uh, mm -hmm. with the internet. Mm -hmm. So. Again, everyone agrees that this is a, an important issue and they want to get something done, uh, but now we got to get something on paper and get it ironed out. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree with you more, um, Representative County. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um, zero-based budgeting because that is another big um, issue that yeah. is going to be taken up by the legislature this year. And um, I'm kind of curious as what the zero-based budgeting yeah. uh, entails. Well, this is House File 1. Uh, the Speaker uh, yeah. <laughs> dictates what, get, what gets House File 1. And I was honored. Um, so there's kind of a process issue. You can file a bill, a House file, or you can do a study bill. A House file is uh, what you have your name on. And I filed a bill on a House file um, for zero-based budgeting. So what that means is basically the way it works in our state and our budget right now, um, agencies um, present their budget kind of based on what they did last year. What zero-based budgeting would do is they have to um, submit a budget from zero. So they'd have to justify every dollar uh, that gets allocated to them for every program that they yeah. have. Mm -hmm. So what this is, it's a means to an end in terms of getting at unnecessary spending. So rather than starting at the base from last year, I feel that we should start at zero. So that's a way for us, to hopefully, to really justify what is necessary in our spending and our budget. And I would just make one further comment. Mm -hmm. This would be a very good thing for the Congress to have. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> um, Representative County, so, so just so I understand and our viewers understand, so would there be a bait, would you figure out a base when it's zero base budgeting would they start with a base budget that or they just start from zero and you and you build that well I mean we, we have we have commitments that we make uh, okay. going out so those would be you know those those would be put in there okay. um, 
but also we have a lot of things that frankly just get rubber stamped mm -hmm. and I think should have a little bit more scrutiny uh, by the legislature um, and so this is a way to get at that. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's an excellent idea. So, so I'm curious about the House File One. So, the Speaker, if it's a House File One, then that's the Speaker's main yeah. priority for it, legislation. It, it's it's kind of symbolic, but it's all it's uh it's important. I mean, yeah. you know, it, when it is denoted as House File One, yeah. um, hopefully it's a priority of the House, right. and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to vote on it. Yeah. Very good. It'll, it'll, it's one of these deals, it'll never happen if we don't get the conversation started. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this conversation can yep. can start. Um, I am curious, uh, um, and I'm not sure that I quite understand it, but the the uh, the elimination of the straight um, voting, the straight party ticket. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious of what that's all about and kind of go through yeah. that a little bit. Um, Iowa is one of 12 states that allows on our ballot, you can fill in, fill in the oval at the top of the ballot, Democrat or Republican. And what that means is you can vote straight ticket if you fill in one of those bubbles and every Democrat gets a vote, every Republican gets a vote. Um, I feel that that practice uh, should go away um, for, for a number of reasons. Number one, I think uh, a little more scrutiny of every race is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It would add a little education. Mm -hmm. People would uh, go down the ballot uh, rather than just the top of the ballot. And these every race is important. Every office is important, especially Absolutely. down the ballot. Mm -hmm. um, so what this would do is um, it would take a little bit of partisanship off the ballot. And I think we have enough partisanship right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this would be one way to do that. And uh, again, we had a, it's pretty much almost even in terms of Democrats and Republicans that do this. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that kind of tells me that this is, uh, the partisanship of it is pretty even. Mm -hmm. So, but I hopefully we can all get together and uh, eliminate this practice. Do you think that practice of straight party voting has been just kind of a lazy person's way of voting or they just like check the Well, I think, uh, and... well, what I think it is, it's, it's not the best way to be educated voting. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to look at every race. Yeah, I absolutely. want them to do a little research if they can, yep. um, and they'll be a more educated voter and they'll be a better voter, yeah. rather than just filling in that oval at the top of the ballot. Yep. Uh, excellent, I think that's a great point. Um, another thing, um, the, the issue that I'd like to kind of get your opinion on is that school start date. Boy, that yeah. has seemed to be a big <laughs> <laughs> firecracker uh, sure has. in the debate. So why don't you go through that a little bit and explain yeah, you know, I was, about the school I, start date. I was talking to a former legislator who no longer serves. Uh, he said to me, this has been an issue for over 30 years, ever since the uh, the current law was put in, put in the books. Um, so where we stand right now is, um, and I would just add, and I would start with, I hope we can find a compromise on this issue. We have good people uh, who advocate on both sides of this. Um, right now, we have a law that says schools can't start uh, before September 1, but a waiver can be applied for. Um, last year, we had, out of 365 school districts, 363 asked for the waiver. Mm -hmm. 363 were granted the waiver to be able to start earlier in August. So with that fact alone, tells me we have a flawed law. Mm -hmm. It's a rubber stamp. Um, we have, uh, on both sides of the issue, we have the tourism industry, um, as well as, uh, you know, kind of the folks that are advocating for um, the economy and how this affects uh, revenues for the state. And then uh, we also, on the, on the other side, we kind of have the school boards and uh, administrators, superintendents that feel uh, school should have local control over the, uh, over the issue. Mm -hmm. um, we have, it, this, this issue really does cut through both parties, all four caucuses. There'll be people on both sides of it. Um, but I would just add two things. Um, number one, what I hear from my constituents is that they want a traditional summer. Mm -hmm. with their families mm -hmm. and they don't want school starting earlier and earlier and encroaching on that traditional summer with their family. Uh, number two, I feel that the legislature should have a vision for how everything works 
in this state and the economy and the cycle that that provides. Uh, frankly, we're biting the hand that feeds us to fund our schools mm -hmm. uh, by starting earlier and earlier with uh, fewer kids being able to have summer jobs, uh, fewer kids and uh, being able to attend, you know, whether it be a municipal pool, uh, whether it be able to go to the Blank Park Zoo, whether it be able to go to Adventureland, and of course, uh, to be able to go to the Iowa State Fair as well. Mm -hmm. Those are all excellent points. I mean, um, it does because they get out late and they start early, and so it makes yeah. it kind of difficult to get the. Yeah. Um, so yeah. why is it? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and it, it 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 kind of came to a head uh, this past December. Um, the governor, uh, who I w the governor who I would applaud his action, mm -hmm. um, said that no more uh, directed his de director of the Department of Education to no longer grant waivers or to at least provide some more scrutiny to these waivers. Um, so what the governor did was provide leadership on this issue. We haven't been able to come to consensus mm -hmm. at the legislature on this. Mm -hmm. So um, what I see is the governor provided leadership to get us all to the table. And uh, we're seeing a lot of this right now. There are a lot of editorials being written. There are a lot of emails being sent to legislators. And uh, I'm hopeful um, that we'll be able to come to a compromise. The way I kind of word folks is, I hope everyone can be at least equally unhappy uh, with uh, with what we come up with, but something that we have two good groups. We have, uh, you know, kind of the industry and we have schools. Everyone wants both to be uh, successful in this state. Absolutely. So I'm hopeful that we can come to a yeah. compromise. Yep. I would agree that education has been a big hallmark in this state for a long time. I mean, quality education. So, oh, absolutely. And, and in every respect of it. So, well, hopefully this issue will get resolved. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's a good, and I think it's great leadership that it's being discussed again. So, um, how, anything else, uh, Representative County, that you'd like to share with the voter? I well, mean, we had some pretty substantial stuff here yeah. this morning, but if you well, have anything else, we're getting started. Like? We're getting started with our fourth week uh, at the legislature uh, mm -hmm. today. So what we have is uh, the we have about five more weeks before the first funnel comes. So a lot of these things that uh, we were discussing today, um, they need to get moving by that time, March sixth. So tell, tell me real quick, if you would, just because um, we're about out of time, but. Tell me about that final process real yeah. quick, because I think uh, voters are, would be interested. Yeah, uh, it's important. It's a self-imposed deadline um, at the legislature for a bill to get out of a committee, um, a policy bill to get out of a committee. Mm -hmm. So that broadband issue that we discussed, for example, mm -hmm. will, will need to be out of the Commerce Committee, which I chair, um, by the first funnel, or else it won't be eligible uh, for to to uh, advance the rest of the session. Okay. So when you hear first funnel, it's basically a self-imposed deadline um, for us to start to focus on what is going to go forward and what's going to get done this year. And the second funnel is? Second funnel is um, a Senate file has to be out of a House committee and okay. vice versa. A House file has to be out of the Senate okay. committee. I'd like to uh, uh, thank again Representative County for being with on our show this morning.